All right, and the toast is ready. Is the toast ready? Oh, I think we're just going to keep going. Five, I think we're going to call it. Or number six, I'll, I'll see how I start numbering these things. I might go off the cuff. Uh, once again, Shaka Shekman, Michael Bo, Randall Payton. The, the, the one that I was thinking of was I had a student who, in design, they were doing a uh, patent search, etc. And because of what they're doing, there are lots and lots and lots of mm. patents. And they kept saying to me, they kept asking, is this enough? And I had to explain to them that it's not about having enough of these patents. It's that what we want to see is, have you looked out there? And a lot of them can be grouped. You can say they have this feature in common, which That's is pertinent. Right. And you just need to explain to us, this is the feature that is in a lot of these types of designs. This is why it's good. This is why it's bad. And then give us some examples. You don't need to give us every example. No. And I think what students fail to understand, maybe just because no one's explained it to them, is patents are grouped according to devices yeah. and methods. Yeah. And a golden patent is where you've got a new method with a new device. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a new device which just achieves uh, an, an existing method, um, you don't have a golden patent. One other point I would make about asking questions, which is more of a, a meta question issue, and I've had this with a few students, both in research and design, is they come to you and they ask a question mm. and you answer it, which is a, a bit of a conversation, but in a lot of ways is a, is a monologue. You are talking to them and you're saying, you could try this and you list some steps. We say, you could try this, and then you list some steps and you give them some options. You, you're just spitballing, trying some stuff out. And whether it's because they are intimidated by you or it's a lot of information to take in or whatever it is, at some point they actually stop following what you're talking about. But they don't ask if you can repeat it or slow down. Or, mm. And to me, that's actually a big part of asking a question is you might ask us a perfectly valid question. Like it's well structured, you've got the background, everything we've spoken about. But when we talk, because we are more experienced and we talk to people from student level all the way up to, you know, past retirement, fully life experienced designers, you, you deliver information, you talk at a particular pace because also we get excited about the project. Yeah. So we start spitballing and throwing ideas and it's rapid fire and you can get lost in that. And it's not a bad thing if you get lost to ask the supervisor or the person you're asking the question, can we just go over that again? Mm. Make some notes. Yeah. yeah. R write it down. I mean, if somebody lets you, you can try recording it. But first off, I don't allow that personally. Mm. And secondly, it's often not that effective because in the moment you've got everything either side of the audio clip. But if you go back later you're in a different mindset and you get this audio out of nowhere, it's kind of like this podcast. If you listen to it out of nowhere or just this bit out of nowhere, it will make no sense. So I'm just going to cut it and put but this right up front. I would do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but it, it's that if you don't, if, if you didn't take it the first time, get it, if it didn't sink in the first time, that's not a bad thing. Mm. Just make sure you have a way of going back over it. Because asking a question and getting an answer is only the first step to actually using the answer. It's basically all down to planning. If you are Sean the Sheep and you walk into my office with your phone on record and then you look like a dog staring at the ocean with like f that's big, you end up with with nothing. Yeah. You know, you listen to this thing, you ask questions, eyes glazed over as I draw pictures and drag polars and you know, all sorts of things. And if you don't interact in, in that session as a kind of live and understand it as you go, you cannot go home, put that recording under your pillow and by osmosis in the morning understand Also, if you interact on. in that session, you have memory of it because yes. you were an active participant, you were thinking about it. And if we sketch a bunch of stuff on the whiteboard or a piece of paper and you'd like to take it, just ask. We're not going to kill you. And chances are, if it's sketched on a piece you mean of you paper, you don't sell your sketches. <laughs> no, you know, unfortunately, it's just the agency fees and the university's IP rules. Um, but honestly, if it's sketched on a piece of paper and you can make sense of what I've sketched, because by the time I'm done I and I've layered everything drawing. on top, it's I passed drawing very well. Actually, I'll have you know. Um, but uh, by the time you're done. Because you sketch one thing and then you say, and you could do it like this and you sketch a few things and you add on and until eventually you've got 
five concepts overlaid with each other and it's some awful, you know, walking machine with wheels, with whatever it is. If you can make sense of that sketch, if it helps you, ask us because chances are if it's on a piece of paper, I'm just going to throw it away. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I actually want to get back. We were talking about that patent thing because that, that actually gets me. Not What's the it. patent thing? The patent <laughs> thing. We can talk the, about The <laughs> jokes are myriad about this, by the way. Really? Yeah. I never kind of made that connection. In design, the number of jokes people made about this and they're like, patentable patent and oh God, it oh just God. got, it was really bad. It was like a Dr. Seuss book. So the whole thing with looking up ideas, call it benchmarking, call it just lit surveys, patent searches, whatever the case is. You're looking for ideas on which to base or, or to have options. You, you need options in design. Call it concepts, call it al alternatives, call it whatever the hell you want. A patent is a possible option. It is not that idea. It is not that specific system that you then have to go pay that person. It's, well, you might have to if you use this idea. But it's not that person. You don't have their sketches from the patent as your actual concepts. The idea is, is that it's an inspiration. And the reason that we look at patents is because the likelihood is you want to go something that's not the standard system. You don't want to have the four-wheeled, four-doored car every time. Maybe you want to go for something different, whether it's gull wing doors or sliding doors. And those sort of ideas can sometimes come from patents. So a good reason to then look at patents is to get those really far out of their ideas is probably idea they're just a patent and nothing more just yet it's because they're maybe not suitable or they're not actually a really good idea it's just the person owns the idea but that's the thing it's not there about all right that is concept one and patent two is patent two is concept two or anything like that don't just have them and say okay cool now i've got my concepts and oh look lord there's, there's your damn concepts all of a sudden because you've had them as your patent ideas it's not the only way of finding ideas it is just one of them it is one of your various tools and methods for getting information. And in terms of explaining what a patent is, as a sort of design engineer, you need to look that each patent generally discloses a device, but you also get patents that disclose a method. And only some patents have, the, have a brand new method and a brand new device. So an example is you know, a, a nuclear powered everlasting toothbrush there'll be some method in there hmm. in terms of how to make a micro portable smallest sort of nuclear powered thing make it safe etc and there's all kinds of other patents which would be involved in that um, but the method would be a novel brand new way to clean teeth gums etc um, for your dj dog for example yeah um, and when you're doing patent patent searches don't just start with the new ones hmm. you know so an Those example which ones. example which i always use is that the Aircraft or aviation autopilot was patented in 1883 and it was done for a thing which could always point a hot air balloon in a certain direction. Sure. And it was done with a little kind of steam gizmo and a, a gyroscope and, and things like that. Now that was the method of yeah. autopiloting an aircraft. All the devices which are currently used when 737 Max is plowing to the desert, that's all brand new devices. But the method is unchanged. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another good example of that is the uh, or spacesuits. Specifically, I'm talking about actually the lunar spacesuits. When they're designing those, you want to inflate it. You don't have the arms suddenly stick out because that's what your air pressure is doing. You want to be able to move their arms and move in a confined space going through a hatch or coming down a ladder. The inspiration for the final design was the corset from Victorian era. Uh, there's actually a really good book called uh, Fashioning Apollo where it goes into the whole thing of how they designed the Apollo spacesuits. It, it rambles on at the end, but certainly the beginning is actually really interesting. And it's that, the idea, the inspiration wasn't from these sheaving armor plates that link together, because that was certainly one of the options, but instead you have something that can constrict and keep the pressure in, so it acts like almost like a second muscle, I guess, so that you can move. Yeah, it's brilliant, but the inspiration is corset, not another suit of armor or another... Um, a high pressure flight suit or something like that that might have been what you have been the first connection with. Here's a question for you. How yeah. did the astronauts scratch an itch? Hmm. It depends which one you're talking about. But I mean, is that why they jumped around on the moon so funny? They had a sort of itch <laughs> on their back and couldn't get to it. So those they actually just had to muscle through, but inside of the helmets they had a little piece of 
basically the scratchy side of Velcro, so that if they had an itch on their nose or their chin, that it was literally there because that is considered the most maddening sort of itch. Yeah. And it was added because when they were doing the, the, the water tank tests, that was what they complained about. They said, yeah. the itch on your back, because what people don't realize is they think you're cold in a space suit. It's yeah. actually the opposite you're problem. Oil. You're trying to get heat yeah. up. And they, so you would start sweating and you'd have sweat running down your body. And they said, like sweat running down your lower back, that is very irritating. But an itchy nose or an itchy chin, that's going to, to be the worst. But getting back to what you were saying about patent searches, I mean, there's a whole other topic we can talk about at some point about biomimicry and mm. how that is inspiration from nature. massive inspiration yeah. for yeah. design because it's basically empirical optimization that's happened. Yeah. But for me, in terms of design questions, the probably the most important design questions that you're going to ask are the ones that you're going to be asking yourself when you're interrogating information. So when you look at a patent, there's the method and there's the device. But what you have to do is you have to ask yourself, perhaps, what is the method? What is the device? And then beyond that, you actually have to look at, is this pertinent? And, uh, you know, is it good yeah. in some way? And these are the questions as a designer. It's the same as um, critiquing your design. Uh, we've added a component, or EXA has added a component, that in fourth year you are required to critically assess your design. And most people think that what that means is you write a section saying how it meets your URS. And that is not what we're looking for. What we are looking for is can you look at your design and say, my baby's got an ugly chin. And why? I couldn't fix the ugly chin. And the wow. ugly chin is like this. This is why the chin's ugly. Yeah. I've got an ugly chin. But... The baby can grow a beard. <laughs> the baby can grow a beard. But that, I mean, that's, that's the whole point is when it comes to critical assessment, it's a really important part of any design, any process, either selecting concepts or looking at methods or when your design is done, deciding when it's far enough is saying, is this going to be good enough for a first iteration, a second iteration, yeah. or whatever it is, because at some point you have to freeze that stage of the design and move on. So I, th I think that's a really important kind of question to, because from that other questions emerge. Well, I tend to, sorry, I, I tend to have it with my students, especially the, the, the later year students. I'm going to ask, I ask them a set of questions almost every consultation. I ask more questions than they ask. But the idea is, is I want you, and maybe you can start using these kind of things where we're asking ourselves questions or we're asking questions based on the questions you ask. It's getting an idea of the kind of questions we ask. Because those mm -hmm. are the kind of questions that we're going to be asking when we mark your reports, when we evaluate your work. Um, and not just as lecturers, but as supervisors or as potential clients. As fellow engineers. As fellow engineers. These are the questions that will be asked. So ask, you know... Learn to ask those same questions of yourself. Imagine me sitting there next to you, scary, I know, then asking that same question, why have you done that? And if you don't have an answer, don't just keep running ahead and suddenly just keep going to the choices. Make sure you've got an answer because I'm eventually going to ask you that question and I'm going to really upset the fact you haven't asked it answered it yet. But don't take the questions that you get asked and then pass them on to all your friends oh, and God, then prep yeah. all the answers for the same questions because that's not how we work. I've got three words, mm. one for each of us. Cool. The word stuck, oh. right? Mm -hmm. I'm stuck in design. I am lost in design and I am confused in what I'm doing. Now, each one of those words we've received in emails and students might choose to say them. Yeah. Each one of those is completely different. Oh God, yeah. So which one should we do first? Stuck, lost or confused? I uh, stuck or lost, confused is a whole nother matter. Confused is a whole other, yeah. All right, so if, if we take this thing, remember we're not saying the word design at all, but in terms of this thing, of you first have to figure out exactly what the problem is. Yeah. You then have to figure out what has to be solved in the sort of order. Go back to last week's um, uh, podcast on the levels of, this, of, of the D word. Um, <laughs> which, uh, which, which word were we picking? I say it's, it's sort of stuck. Stuck. Stuck is all about where in this process you are. Yeah, you, you don't know step two. So you have done a set amount of work. So in theory, this is where I, when, when you tell me you're stuck, I, I think you've got to a point, everything is fine. 
you're good. You, you, you know that it's just that next step, you don't know. Whether it's you've got too many options or whatever the case is. You, you, but before that, it's, not, it's the unyet decided. And, and I would say that stuck is a different definition, whether a student says that they are stuck in the analysis, say the detailed mm. part of, the, the, of, the, of yeah. the design project, or in the kind of problem definition thing. I would say the word stuck would be more relevant to say second and third year students in the early phases, like trying to yeah. figure out the problem, just because it's the first time you're really trying to do that. No student at second or third year level should get stuck in the analysis mm. because the kind of courses that you do are far beyond what is expected in a second or third year design project. Yeah, I think as well, um, the difference between stuck and lost for me is, I, I think of it in terms of motion, stuck means you aren't moving. Lost means you're moving, but you don't have a direction. Stuck, you know where you want to go, you don't know how to get there. Mm. And it's often going to be because of what we call choice paralysis. Uh, you know, they show like if you've got a wall of 40 different types of toothpaste, people will stand there for five minutes and then walk away without buying toothpaste because they couldn't choose one. But if you give them three, they walk up, 30 seconds, they grab a toothpaste and they leave. Yeah. And with design, because it's open-ended, because you are the one driving and you know you have to get to something that does something or solves a problem. But there are so many ways to do it. Choice paralysis is one of the biggest problems you're going to have. Should, and sorry, if you're, before you go on, choice paralysis, that's stuck or lost? That's stuck. Okay, I'm, I'm just checking that. Choice that's paralysis stuck. is stuck. Yeah. Lost is when you are inside the five minutes where you are busy trying to, you're trying every single one of those toothpastes in your head. Well, if you're brushing your teeth in the shops, there's a whole other problem. Um, uh, that would be true. Can you imagine just unwrapping a toothbrush in the shop and then try, and then wrapping it neatly back up and putting it on the shelf? Going to a person. Or actually, it? you can just imagine one on a string next a to the toothpaste thing. Toothbrush on a string, yeah. Toothbrush on a string. And, but but yeah. even better, then you have the food card next to you. So <laughs> eat something. Brush your teeth. Please Which try the jalapeno. Is best with orange juice. <laughs> try the jalapeno cheese poppers. Now your with girlfriend is standing next to you. <laughs> Test the toothpaste. Um, but to get back to the point, for me, stuck is you have, you've got so many choices. You've opened your design up so much yeah. with so many choices that now you just you're you're frozen yeah. because that's what happens. You don't know how to decide, and the easiest way to do that. Is just to decide. <laughs> it's the Chinese takeout problem. Yeah. You just decide and then go a little way down the road. And if you're like, uh, actually, the tires are kind of making that thumping noise. Let's go back. <laughs> chuck that one out. Now we've got a shorter list. And, and, and I would say that one way to sort of unstick yourself is to get lost. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, actually, yes. Well, I mean, that's basically it. It's just go. Just, just move. Yeah. Keep going. And get yourself a bit lost in the design. So process. let's go for the word confused. Whew. Whew, that's I mean, a... so confused is not understanding. I'd say confused is going wrong in step one of the problem solving. So it's not the same as lost. Because mm. lost means you know you're lost. Yeah. Confused means you don't know. Lost is you know what you don't know. Confused is you don't know what you don't know. Correct. I'd almost say to me, so an example for me for confused would be I've got these numbers and the numbers are wrong and I don't know why. Or I don't even know they're wrong and I've got numbers. But the thing is, is that technically confused? I mean, we're then inferring no, that, that, confusion. That, that's actually lost. Yeah. I, I've got so numbers. When, when someone says they're confused in their design, it's, it's because, or, or the, the problem solving process, it's because what they are getting is not the same as what they expected. And they can't understand why there's this difference between them. That's the confusion. And as you say, it could come from, and probably normally does, from right at the beginning at identifying the problem to solve. Because you've gone off and you've solved something which is, to, to you know, however you want to call it. You could say primary or secondary problem. You could say uh, proximal or causal. But the point is, you've tried to solve a symptom and you're not actually solving the problem. Mm. So sort of output versus input driven. Exactly. I find a lot of students are really scared to freeze the output and then <sighs> work backwards. I mean, I know when I was doing exams and you've got a proof, like proof this is equal to that. Well, you start the thing and you start from the end and you sort of work Get backwards. Get them towards <laughs> each other, yeah. And the thing is, you know, 
to to put together a design of, of anything, they're going to be the different systems on the different levels, and they're going to be a set of equations which make that particular system work. But everything that comes in or goes out is linked to something else. Yeah. And sometimes you have to start with the end point. I, to the to the third is I explain it, it's a bit like wearing your jeans inside out. It's just a different way of doing things. Yeah. Uh, and you might get to the answer a hell of a lot sooner than if you try and and constantly change what's going in because if you're doing that you're lost yeah well and i think as well with confusion is the problem solving process is not one size fits all it's no. not going to look the same for each problem and so how much work you have to do in each phase of the design is different so i've spoken to students before that i've been supervising where what they're trying to do is solve or come up with designs for um you know, like a something quite subjective or like a process or something like that. The problem with that is you can't have a concept and choose between them without actually basically fully designing yeah. that concept. Because only then can you say, this is what it'll cost, this is how much time it'll take to implement, etc. But the great thing is you do all of that work and then you pick and your design is done. Mm. You just have to tweak now. Yeah. Whereas with other designs, because they are very hardcore mechanical or whatever it is, you can actually have very high level things, high level concepts to make your, your, your concept selection. And then you do the detail. And what's confusing is what type of project am I looking at right now? Mm. What, what is the problem I'm trying to solve? Do I have to come up with full solutions up front and then pick? Or do I come up with basic ideas and then flesh them out? Or is it a mix? And the biggest problem which, which leads students to, I think the word confused. for this would be is, is confused, is that if you're trying to design and you do your report at the same time, mm -hmm. um, one question for both of you, uh, obviously there's the stuck, or you do stuck, stuck separately, but in terms of lost and confused in, in this process, um, what do you think is sort of more demotivating to, to an individual? And, you know, if you're lost, you can realize you're lost mm. or else external factors like all the other groups have finished that exercise early and left and you would stuck thinking, you know, so you've got, um, you know, audience effects. Yeah. What's the question? What is the question? Lo <laughs> Poorly <laughs> phrased being, question, being, Mr. Boyle. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> terrible. I'm going to sit in the naughty corner. Uh, in terms of lost and con lost or confused, what is sort of more demotivating? If if you were a student working on a project, which one of these is the one that sort of leads into the spiral of I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know what to ask and I don't know if I can fix it? I think it depends on the time of the project. If you're near the end and you're confused, that's really demotivating because you've probably gone wrong right since you've point. gone wrong from yeah. the start. While lost is because there's a lack of direct, you're going and you don't think you're ever producing anything, that's probably the worst thing. And I think it's probably because, particularly for the, the open-ended courses, there's no rubric up front. No. So you can't chase it. Yeah. Mm. And that's that thing, one of the questions which the students pose is, how do you know when you've done enough? How do you know when you're done? Yeah. And obviously at the student level design, you know, a fourth year realistically in eight weeks could probably design a better wheelbarrow yeah. fu fully, like ready to go. Other than that, it's, a bit of this, a bit of this, yeah. and, and some detailed component design. The other thing I, I try to have the students not do is when, I, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a, a bit of a lost, a bit of confused aspect is, it's no more lost. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going to be enough. I don't know what I need to give you. I said, okay, fine. You want to put something on my table, which is your design. Scale model or full size, depending on the size of your system. What are you putting on my table? Hmm. Okay, fine. Now you just need to prove to me why those things are that. I think in terms of the demotivation as well, it depends on your personality type. Mm. I mean, engineers, let's be honest, an engineering student, pretty much every single one of you slash us was a top academic student at school. You know, that, Speak for yourself. <laughs> well, but I mean, a, a lot of people in engineering are used to being the person that just got it. Yeah. You just understood it. It, made, it always made sense. So to me... For a lot of people, lost is scary, mm. but not necessarily demotivating because okay. you know that you've got options. Sure. You're not sure how, which option to pick yet, but you've got options. Confused is that you feel like you don't have options. Mm. You've got to a point where 
you actually don't even know what you need to fix. At least with Lost, you can say, my problem is I don't know which one to pick of whatever. And there's a you can see a way out, but you're just not sure how to approach it. I would say for myself, Confused is, regardless of the stage in the project, more devo demotivating. And I think the thing which, you know, if we take this thing full circle, when a student walks in and asks us a question, the student might not know which of those sort of three options there are, and we try and assess yeah. what it is. But it, it requires that live interaction for us to really try and figure out, okay, you've literally just gone past what you were supposed to do, which yeah. you were just, just lost. Yeah. Whereas confused is, uh, you know, okay, c come in here, let's just have a think about where you are and what you're doing. Yeah. And then stuck, st stuck every single student that's, that come to me with a, I'm stuck, it's because they hadn't worked out exactly what the problem was. Yeah. And if you don't, it's too complicated. Also, just remember when you come to us with a question sometimes or you email us with a question, if we don't have enough background information, we are lost and confused. So we actually don't know how to answer your question at first because we need to have, we need enough information to be able to help you. Yeah. We that's don't just blindly throw out answers and hope something sticks. Yeah, you know, the, God, the buckshot thing. method. No, it's, yeah. that's why we, if, if you come to me for a design consultation, I'll ask you to bring your design mm -hmm. log mm -hmm. and, you know, some, email me your report if that's the way you're working. Um, I, I think as well, one thing that is confusing, you spoke about writing up at the same time as design. And I think one reason why that leads to people feeling lost and confused is they get stuck in trying to figure out what needs to go in what section of a report. And that is the last thing you need to worry yeah. about. I also like to point out to people, we give you a mark sheet. We have to mark you on certain things. That doesn't mean that has to be a section. Yeah. yeah. It really doesn't. Like you, you can give me your design specification, which is part of your analysis. All of, tell me a story mm. with oh, yeah. your design. Mm. Don't, Say, this has got to be, I'm, I'm more of a research person in the majority of my work. When people are like, okay, here's the results section. And they just give me pages of graphs and, and photos. And then the next section is discussion. That's not how we as humans engage with information. If I, if I want you to look at a picture and talk about it, I put the picture where I'm talking. I put it up on the screen and I talk about it. And it's the same with design. If you want me to to sort of know or help you with something that's going wrong, show me the stuff that you are thinking of that's in your head while you're trying to make yeah. a decision. So I can put it in my head to help you come to a conclusion, make a decision. All right, cool. Thanks very much. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah, without my squeaky voice. We'll see. <laughs>